Okay, everyone, if we can find our seats, silence our cell phones, we're about to get started. Okay, good evening, everyone. We are on the record. Today is Wednesday, the 27th day of April in the year 2022. This is a regular meeting of the Jersey City Municipal Council. We had a scheduled 6 p.m. start. The clock on my cell phone is showing 6.07 p.m. May I have a roll call for the commencement of this meeting? Councilperson Ridley. Here. Councilperson Prinzeri. Here. Councilperson Baggiano will not be in attendance. Councilperson Soleil. Here. Councilperson Solomon. Here. Councilperson Gilmore. Here. Councilperson DeGeese. Here. Councilperson Rivera. Here. And Council President Waterman. Here. We have eight council members in attendance at 6 0. What did I say? 7 p.m. <laughs> Thanks. Can we kindly rise for a moment of silence, please? Thank you very much. On behalf of Council President Waterman, in accordance with New Jersey Public Laws of 1975, Chapter 231, the Open Public Meetings Act, also known as the Sunshine Law, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the posting on the bulletin board of the first floor of City Hall, the annual notice, which is the schedule of meetings and caucuses of the Municipal Council for the calendar year 2022, and filed in the office of the City Clerk on Thursday, October 28th, 2021. In addition, at its time for its preparation, the agenda of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Friday, April 22nd, 2022, at 4.10 p.m. to the Municipal Council, Business Administrator, Corporation Council, local newspapers, and posted on the city's website, so I can certify as to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. Council members, before we go into our regular order of business, we just have to, uh, I need a motion to add item 10.41 City Resolution 22-333, which is a resolution authorizing the use of competitive contracting to procure a contract establish a community crisis response to 9-11 and other calls where behavioral health is reported to issue in order to help Jersey City residents access help. Motion, second. Motion made by Councilperson Rivera, seconded by Councilperson Soleil. On a motion to add item 10.41, resolution 22-333, to the agenda, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGeese. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Motion carries 8-0 to add item 10.41, resolution 22-333 to the agenda, with Councilperson Baggiano absent. There are no first reading ordinances. Sean. Council members, may I have a motion to defer to item 10.7, resolution 22-299? Motion. Motion made by Councilperson Rivera. Second. Seconded by Councilperson Soleil. And that is a resolution approving the appointment of Carmen M. Gandula as Director of the Department of Finance for the City of Jersey City. On the motion to defer to item 10.7, resolution 22-299, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGeese. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent to defer to item 10.7, resolution 22-299.
So, council members, I read it into the record. This is a resolution appointing Carmen Gandula as finance director of the Department of Finance for the City of Jersey City. On the resolution 22-299, Councilperson Ridley. Um, I just want to say that um, Carmen, we thank you for, oh, there you are. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for um, all your help uh, in, since you've been acting in this position and even before in your previous position. I think that you are always readily available when we need information and um, you know anything that we need help on. And I just want to say personally thank you for all the help that you've provided to me in my office. And with that, I proudly vote aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. First is your Director of Community Development, now transferring over to finance. As somebody who is not a finance person, I appreciate you taking the time and um, exercising a lot of patience walking me through some of the more complicated nuances of the work that you've done um, since I've been working with you with the city. And so with that, I proudly vote aye, and I look forward to working with you in your new capacity and moving forward. Thank you. Councilperson Soleil. Director. You have done amazing work under uh, the community development when you were the director there. And in my time working with you, you know, I've had nothing but great experiences and would really want to thank you for all the work you've done and all the work you will do. I know the people of Jersey City are grateful for your help. And also tonight we are shattering a glass ceiling. I believe you are the first a uh, Hispanic uh, woman to occupy this position, first Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican yeah. I'm, I'm right, <laughs> yep. So congratulations and thank you for all the work you've done and will continue to do. And with that, I vote aye. Councilperson Solomon. Director, I look forward to working with you. Uh, we've really appreciated everything you've done in your prior roles and uh, excited to see you in this new role. So with that, I vote aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Yes, um, Carmen, you have been um, a great asset to the city even before in this, um, in this role. I vividly recall you walking me through a whole process to help me out before I even thought about running for office or anything. Since I've been here, your office have taken the opportunity and a chance to break things down to me that I didn't necessarily know. Um, I think you're gonna continue to do a great job. Uh, and I think that you're gonna raise the bar for what we look for in municipal employees and I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Councilperson DeGees. Director and fellow bully mom, <laughs> Only if you will know what that is. And congratulations and thank you for everything. Prior to being elected, you were such a wealth uh, of resource of knowledge for me and now elected, you extend yourself more than you probably should to help me understand and learn things. This is very well deserved. I'm so happy that you're standing up there so proud because it just speaks to your work ethic and what you're giving to the city. So thank you. I vote aye. Councilperson Rivera. Oriqua. So uh, as we say in Puerto Rico, in La Isla del Encanto, I'm gonna call you by the accented name, Carmen. <laughs> Listen, you've been amazing. You've knocked it out the park uh, from day one that you came into City Hall. And even when you was in community development, I've always uh, looked for you for guidance. Uh, continue to do well. The city is very proud of you. and. Um, it shows that the Latino community have your back big time. And they're out here which is supporting you, and I as well have the same. You're gonna do a great job. Siempre pa'lante, I vote aye. Gracias. Council President Waterman. Well, Carmen, first let me say congratulations. Um, the position was well-deserved and earned. Sometimes what people don't understand is that when a woman of color gets a position, she really had to work for it. And I am conscious of the work that you have done. You earned this. You don't have to, you know, you know, feel like it was given. No, you earned it. 
I work with you with community development. I work with you on affordable housing. And what people don't really know about that, about you, that you really is an advocate for so many people. You are an example. I know you are. Um, for some of the women in City Hall, I think you can be a great resource to show them how to get through difficult times as being a woman in a powerful position. I am so proud of you, girl. I am. City in the resolution. In the, women's in the women community, this is a home run because now we got a woman dealing with money, <laughs> something that we deal with all our lives. And so um, congratulations. I vote yes. And you know, if there's anything that I can do for you, uh, my door is always open. And God bless you in your, in your journey. Thank you. City Resolution 22-299 is approved 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent. Congratulations. Director, would you like to say a few words? Oh, well, um, I'll be brief. Um, I came to the city in 2014, you know, left the banking and finance world, not knowing what I was going to get into, and I threw my whole heart into this city. Um, the community development programs and the things that we've done and the things that we've stewarded um, in these last eight years have been very, very critical to the city. Um, I'm a city girl through and through. My parents are here from Trenton, New Jersey. Um, they're here right here in the room with me. Oh, that's nice. And so when I think about the work that we have to do for the public, when I think about my hometown, when I think about the things that we have to do, I think of them and I think of everyone here in this room and everyone in this city. Um, I am grateful to many people in this room. I'm grateful to my sorority sisters and my college mentors, my brothers of Lamb Theta Phi, um, colleagues, my new home in the Department of Finance, to my leadership team, to Stephanie, Kyle, Shirley, Jack, uh, Raquel, and even Trish. We're coming together and we're gonna do great things. We will be the best finance department in this state and probably around the country because we're, we're, gonna, we're getting ready to work. So, um, Thank you again, and mommy and papi, I love you. Gracias por todo. And I would be remiss not to acknowledge the team that I'm working with now, the team Barca, John, Peter, the administration, to Mayor Fulop, who took a chance on me eight years ago, and when he said in his interview, Carmen, you're running federal programs, don't F it up. <laughs> it's a true story. I said, Mayor, don't worry, I'll be very conservative. And I think throughout the years, when I kept telling him no, he's like, okay, I got it, I trust you, I know you're not messing up. But to John, thank you, Barca, Peter, everyone here in the room, thank you, and um, I look forward to this. Comment if you won't, if you don't mind, stay there and we'll make it official. Okay. All right. If you want to invite your family up so we can have someone hold the Bible. Yep. Mommy, Papi, Carlos, Manuel. Wait, I guess we are. No, no. Jersey. And that I will bear true faith, bear true faith and, allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same 
to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people, and that it will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties as director of the Department of Finance for the city of Jersey City according to the best of my ability, so help me God. to acknowledge to my family at home, my boyfriend and my dogs, I love you dearly. <laughs> James, babe, I love you. I just want to say that was a complete honor for me to swear in Director Gandula and to acknowledge that she's also a Giants fan, so it's a double pleasure for me. <laughs> so on to our regular order of business. Congratulations again, Director. On to our regular order of business. Our first second reading ordinance is item 4.1, City Ordinance 22-033. An ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 53 personnel of the Jersey City Municipal Code to require that veterans seeking employment as sworn officers in the Division of Public, excuse me, in Divisions of Police or Fire need only demonstrate a bona fide domicile in the City of Jersey City for at least one year prior to the date of their qualifying exam. Council members at the caucus, there was discussions about tabling this ordinance prior to the close of the public hearing. Is that the wishes of the council? Uh, yes, I'll make an amendment or a motion to do so. Okay, Councilperson Solomon has made a motion to table Second. City Ordinance 22-33 prior to the close of the public hearing, and the seconded made by Councilperson Rivera. On the motion to table City Ordinance 22-033 prior to the close of the public hearing, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGeese. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent to table City Ordinance 22-033 prior to the close of the public hearing. On to our next City Ordinance, item 4.2, City Ordinance 22-036 is an ordinance authorizing the City of Jersey City to purchase from the State of New Jersey Department of Transportation real property known as Parcel 42B on the NJDOT maps, also known as Block 1912, Lot P4, on the City's former tax map in connection with the City's construction of Fairmont Avenue, Squ Fairmont Square Park, excuse me, at the intersection of Fairmont Avenue, Storms Avenue, Summit Avenue, and Jewett Avenue. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Motion. Motion made by Councilperson Rivera to close second. the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-033. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilperson Soleil. On the motion to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-033, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGeese. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-033. Would Councilperson Baggiano absent for final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 22? Uh, yeah, I'm saying 33. Um, it's 36. I apologize. Thank you. It's 22-36. For final consideration and adoption of 22-36, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. 
Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGeese. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. City Ordinance 22-036 is adopted 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent. On to our next second reading ordinance. Item 4.3, City Ordinance 22-037, an ordinance authorizing the acquisition by purchase or condemnation of Block 3702, Lot 22, also known as 117 Hutton Street, for the construction of a new police precinct. This is a public hearing, and I see Jean Daly. Just give me one second. Okay, Jean, your time is gonna start on my countdown. You're going in three, two, one, go. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I really, I, I'm gonna speak to 4.3, 4.4, 4 4.5, and just one fell swoop. I actually have a problem when we have these purchase, we're either gonna acquire it by purchase or condemnation. I really have a problem with that because I don't believe uh, people should be forced to sell what property they do own. I think I'm totally against that. And my question is, do any of the owners of these properties not want to sell? Do they have other plans for them? Because I really think it's unfair to force someone to sell property that they have other plans for or been saving for retirement or some type of investment. And also, the prices that the city is offering, are they of market value? Is it gonna be the potential? For example, if one was going to um, have a lot and they wanna put up a, um, let's say, three family home on it, that lot after construction would have far more value than if the city condemns it for their own parking lot. So I'm, I'm always concerned about these things. I have a real problem with them and I know you're gonna pass them anyway, but I just had to state my issue for the record, thank you. This is still a public hearing on City Ordinance 22-037. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Motion. Motion made by Councilperson Rivera. Second. Seconded by Councilperson Soleil. To close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-037, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-037. For final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 22-037, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Uh, I just have one question before I vote. Um, hey, John, what if- Councilperson, if you could just bring the mic closer to you. Okay. What if anything happens if um, we either buy this property or condemnation and we don't move forward with the proposed plan. What happens then? Councilman, oh, sorry, Councilman, so. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Shot clock violation. Uh, Your time's up, uh, right, Mr. BA. <laughs> uh, Councilman, so until we have solidified approved plans by the council, we wouldn't necessarily enact the actual cash payment. Um, just for some of the clarity on the comments, uh, these properties are vacant properties, and we do have to provide the highest and fairest value for those properties in uh, uh, an active uh, fair um, assessment. And uh, condemnation would be the last resort in that matter. Uh, so we are in negotiations with these individuals. Uh, uh, the, for all three properties, the parties have agreed that they're willing to negotiate. This isn't by force. Um, but until we have proper plans, we wouldn't execute any uh, agreement. Um, if we did execute the agreement, and for some reason there was an issue that we couldn't proceed, uh, this, the city would hold that uh, property at its fair, highest and fairest value, and then we'd come to council again to either 
utilize it for another purpose or sell it again to another uh, entity? A vote aye. Okay. Councilperson DeGis. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. City Ordinance 22-037 is adopted 8-0, with Councilperson Bargiano absent. On to our next second reading ordinance, item 4.4, .4, City Ordinance 22-038, is an ordinance authorizing the acquisition by purchase and condemnation of Block 3702, Lot 39, also known as 18 Sherman Place, for the construction of a new police precinct. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Motion. Motion to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-038 was second. made by Councilperson Rivera. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilperson Soleil. On the motion to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-038, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGis. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye and Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Bargiano to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-038. For final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 22-038, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGis. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Warneman. Aye. City Ordinance 22 038 is adopted 8 0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent. On to our next second reading ordinance, item number 4.5, City Ordinance 22 039 is an ordinance authorizing the acquisition by purchase or condemnation of Block 26 0, excuse me, 26. 101 lot 5 also known as 1 West Side Avenue for the construction of a new police precinct this is a public hearing on this ordinance any member of the public wishing to be heard please come up to the podium and state your name for the record motion motion to close the public hearing on city ordinance 22-039 was made by councilperson Rivera may I have a second 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 by councilperson Soleil on the motion to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-039, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGis. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-039. For final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 22-039, Councilperson Ridley. Uh, BA, I know we discussed it at the caucus uh, when we first introduced this ordinance, and um, I think uh, Councilman Gilmore asked a question, and I got a couple calls about it. This isn't locking us in necessarily to this site for the precinct. We can still entertain other sites, correct? That's correct, Councilwoman. What we're just looking to do is make sure it's a possibility that we could explore. Um, there are some environmental issues with that site that we'd have to also look at that may also exclude it. So this is just an opportunity for us to negotiate, uh, make sure that the footprint, if it was chosen, would be able to facilitate that. We take a look at traffic and response times, and then we proceed from there. So this is just the first step in planning. But no nothing's guaranteed, nothing's locked. Thank you. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Yes. Um, John, uh, just so the record reflect, we briefly discussed this, that um, while I am in favor of this new precinct, I am concerned that if we move all of the police present from in that vicinity with close to MLK, where, where a lot of crime is concentrated in that area. So just so the record reflect, we, we plan on having some station, substation of something of that sort to have a presence in that area, correct? Yeah, we'll retain property uh, ownership of that facility, and we could discuss future plans. Uh, or, or, you know, like as I spoke to Councilman uh, Woman Ridley, 
you know, it may happen that it ends up in that area anyway. Um, but we'll have future discussions with yourself and the council as a whole before anything proceeds. Thank you. I vote aye, John. John. <laughs> Sean means John. John means Sean. It's all good. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. City Ordinance. 22-039 is adopted 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent. On to our next second reading ordinance, item 4.6, City Ordinance 22-040, an ordinance amending Chapter 3, Administration of Government, to restructure and add various departments in the City of Jersey City. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record, please. Just give me one second, Santos. My name, <clears throat> my name is Santo Della Monica. Just give me one second. Okay. Your time is going in three, two, one, go. My name is Santo Della Monica. I'm the president of Local 245, the Municipal Workers of Jersey City, DPW. I'm asking to have this ordinance tabled you don't have any structure for the manpower that's coming out of parks and forestry and going into recreation. Those people that are working there, they're my members, they don't know what they're gonna be doing when they get there. They've been working in parks for over 30 years, okay? The other thing is, this ordinance does not have anything in there about manpower. You guys get a lot of complaints, a lot of work has to be done. We need manpower, not only in parks, but throughout the entire city. You want to create new divisions and spend thousands of dollars on deputy directors when we need manpowers. I have my traffic guards here today, and they need a contract. They're out of a contract for seven years, and you're looking to spend all these thousands of dollars on these deputy commanders. We need to take care of the traffic guards, and they need manpower. You're 100 traffic guards short. That means 100 corners not protected. DPW, Parks and Forestry has been working together for 30 years. We took this city through Sandy the disaster. We took it through the pandemic. We operated with chainsaws to free up the city. I don't understand why you taking a division, breaking it up when they've been forming perfectly for 30 years. So on this note, I surely ask the City Council, City Council President Waterman, please table this, call in the unions, not only my unions, but the other unions, get some input on what we need to make this city run efficient. I thank you for the time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. This is still a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard? I see Gene Daly. Your time is going to start on my countdown. You're going in three, two, one, go. Um, good evening again. I actually were f am, am f slightly familiar with the situation with the crossing guards, and I do know they haven't had a contract, and they've been treated like garbage. I will say. I'm serious. Exactly. As a matter of fact, I'm going to allege that there has been, they've been trying, the police union has been trying to union bust the crossing guards. Now, this was just going around a couple years back where this type of solicitation was going on when these cro crossing guards were on duty. I don't know what has transpired since, but it's, it's pretty self-evident when they haven't had a contract renewed in seven years. Does that tell you something? I see potential union busting. Right. So that's ridiculous. I, I'm, I'm ashamed of all of you. And so then you get the sheriffs involved and these people involved. It's an embarrassment. Embarrassment to the city. It's an embarrassment to the kids. How dare you? How dare you? Now, I'm also going to speak about the Division of Forestry or what we want to do forestry-wise. We had the same problem when we merged things with the um, Department of Recreation, or I don't know. Then there was overlap in services. Then who got fired, who got fired, who got newly hired? And there was a whole restructuring. There were lawsuits going back and forth about that. 
In order to cut that off, you speak ahead of time. You try to come up with the best possible solution. I know it makes ever, all the green people, and I'm a green person myself, I love trees. I wish I were an arborist. Um, but but um, we, we should speak to people about this and get input from people. I don't understand what's going on with this council. No one wants to know anybody. No one wants to talk. It's basically dictate, dictate, dictate. It's got to end. Thank you. This is still a public hearance on City Ordinance 22-040. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Motion. Motion made by Councilperson Rivera to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-040. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilperson DeGeese. Did I get that right? Yep. All right. On the motion to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-040, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. <laughs> I was taking a small motion off. Aye. <laughs> well, that's, I got you. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-040. Council members at the caucus, the business administrator, John Metro, mentioned the fact that there were some changes that needed to be done um, because there were some strikeouts for the tax abatement committee uh, division. Uh, it was inadvertently stricken out, and I believe we have to amend city ordinance 22-040 to reflect those changes. So on those changes, I believe it's on the very first page of the ordinance, letter Y, Office of Tax Abatements, that's going to be back on, correct? Yep. Removing the uh, strikeout? Yep, correct, Sean. So uh, the uh, items connected to uh, 360-11, which is the Office of Tax uh, Abatement Management, uh, that was erroneously struck out. So we're asking that it's amended to keep it as it exists today. And uh, Corporation Council will uh, testify that it's not a material uh, change and we can proceed. Uh, Mr. Clerk, the changes are of a clerical nature and are therefore not substantial. Thank you so much. So. Okay. So on the motion to amend City Ordinance 22-040, may I have a motion to amend it? Motion. Who made that motion? I didn't see it. You, sir. Soleil? Yes, Council. Council Person, Soleil. Made the motion. Uh, may I have a second? Second. Second made by Councilperson Rivera. On the motion to amend City Ordinance 22-040 to make sure that the Office of Tax Abatements is re the stricken or removed. Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Baj uh, Saleh. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGeese. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent to amend City Ordinance 22-040. For final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 22-040 as amended, Councilperson Ridley. Um, John, can you just speak a little bit to the, to the reorg? Um, I know people were asking about manpower. Mm -hmm. Can you, uh, I guess, speak how this reorg will impact the manpower that we have in parks and forestry? Yep, sure, mm -hmm. uh, Councilwoman. So uh, uh, we've discussed this a little bit. The prior caucus, we had the closed session, and then uh, the caucus on Monday. So um, I just wanted to reiterate that there will be no layoffs or uh, any uh, loss of manpower in this uh, change. Um, all employees will remain with their permanent civil service titles. Um, they won't be affected that, uh, in that way. Um, we did discuss the opportunity that 
um, emergency snow removal and such, they'll still be eligible for, um, so there'll be no issues with that. And uh, we're gonna transfer right now with our current manpower, uh, split amongst the respected divisions. And uh, we'll start our budget process within the next two or three weeks. And the um, directors of those departments will be requesting additional uh, both employees and uh, additional resources for tools and equipment. Um, and we'll be meeting with the council. Those will all be public uh, uh, budget sessions. And uh, it'll be included in the budget process as we proceed. So uh, we're not losing anything. And we're looking to build as we uh, introduce the budget and start our budget programming. And if we, I guess, create any new titles or new directors or anything like that, that'll come back before the council. Correct. The, uh, the only change that would be substantial at this time is with the Department of Infrastructure, we'll be asking the council to uh, uh, promote a director of the said department uh, as a material. But um, as I spoke to the council in whole, uh, we're looking at an internal employee, so we're not uh, adding to the budget. Okay, with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. I just wanted to make a, a few remarks. First, you know, just to clarify, make sure we're all on the same page. You know, we're not voting on anything relating to the crossing guards tonight. Um, but I hear the concerns. Mm -hmm. I'd like to request that we have a closed session on this because the council has not been briefed on the ongoing negotiations. And I think the you know you all keep my kids safe when they walk to PS5 in the morning. And it's extraordinarily important that the city treats you with the respect that you deserve. And I, I'm sure my colleagues feel the same way. So uh, we obviously want to get a full update on that as soon as possible. Um, and then in terms of, thank you. In terms of the reorg, and I had a good meeting with, with Santo and Local four, uh, 245 and with Councilman Prinzeri. Some of the concerns you brought brought to the Council Caucus on Monday and got some, some answers to those. Um, I'm going to vote aye on this reorganization. I think that um, we want better services on a, a variety of different parts of our city, and this reorg is many, many different divisions. Um, I think a Department of Infrastructure is a really brilliant idea from the administration. It makes a ton of sense. Um, I think it will make our city services better. And I hear the concern that at the end of the day, for certain government services, the issue is manpower. And so you might reshuffle things, but the services aren't going to be better. And I hear that concern, and I think I'm going to make sure that we're asking directly from the administration, what do you need to deliver those services effectively? But then I will now commit to having a direct line with all of you, so I'm getting directly from the folks on the ground doing the work, what you think we need to make our services better. Um, and I think they will get better through this change and through better communication. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with the administration um, and the new division of infrastructure. So with that, I vote aye. Thank you, Councilperson Gilmore. Um, John, I do have a, um, a couple questions. So typically when reorgs take place, do you consult the unions? Do you advise them on what's going to be transferred? Yeah, so How does that process play out? So we would, we would have to do that if we're going to structurally change their uh, titles, their compensation. Uh, we're not doing that today. We're simply just uh, changing the reporting structure. So uh, if there was any oh. sentences where uh, in the former recreation where we had issues with uh, titles and re reapply applications and we're not doing any of that today. We're just simply uh, changing the reporting structure, and uh, and then we'll proceed with additional manpower or outside services as we move forward in the budget process. Okay. Um, this, uh, I just 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 because of prior history when it comes to reorgan um, reorganizing city departments, it, it really rubs me the wrong way. Um, I typically don't like the process, how, how it's done. I don't like the, the lack of inclusiveness in, in the whole situation. So in light of all that, while I do understand some, of, some departments should be moved and shift in different directions, um, I'm of the opinion that whenever problems occur, it's not necessarily because of the division they're working on is more a lack of productivity from the individual and then an oversight. I don't think the restructuring is going to provide better quality service saying that you're gonna have the same people 
there anyway. So in light of all that, um, I'm, I'm going to vote no on, on this uh, reorg. Councilperson DeGis? Yes. Councilperson Rivera? Aye. Aye. And Council President Waterman? Um, before I vote, I want to say to the Cross and Guard, this ordinance has nothing to do with you guys. Now, some of you I know out there, if you're having a problem, consult your council. I didn't know you guys was having such a serious problem. Based on I see you out here, you understand? But I, it, it's been, it seemed like they told you misinformation that this had something to do with you guys, because you're all here. This has nothing to do with you guys, but what you can do is make an appointment with me, and then we will discuss what's going on with the crossing guards, okay? Because um, you know that I'm fair. This council is fair. So you have a concern, we want to address your concern, all right? Now, when it comes to this reorg, what we did as a council, we had private sessions concerning the whole departments of this city. Now, based on the complaints that the council received, the council asked the administration, something has to be done, something has to be changed. Now, this is just one step in the change that really needs to take place throughout this whole city. It really does, because we get complaints on things that are not done. We understand you need manpower. The budget is coming up. We will discuss your manpower to make sure you receive your manpower. No titles will be changed, none at all. I don't know what they telling you, you out there, but I wanna make sure I get it clear with you guys. None of that will happen. You're going to recreation. So, and one thing I wanna make clear too, I don't want you to come up here and try to insult this council and saying we don't know what we're doing. You don't know the meetings that we've met. You don't know how many meetings we had. And we do have your best interests at heart. A lot of times you come insult us. But don't insult us if you don't know all that we have done. And that is fair. If you don't like what we do, meet with us. Don't come across this podium and try to insult us. We all open. Schedule a meeting. That's fair. Schedule a meeting. And so with that, I vote aye, and I welcome the new department infrastructure, which we, we need. Thank you. Okay. City Ordinance 22-040 is adopted as amended 7-1. Would Councilperson Gilmore voting no and Councilperson Baggiano absent? Okay, on to our last second reading ordinance, item 4.7, City Ordinance 22-041, which is an ordinance amending Chapter 84 of the Jersey City Code to regulate the sale of adult use cannabinoids and to amend Chapter 316 of the Jersey City Code to provide for the registration of smoke shops. This is a public hearing on this ordinance. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Just give me one second, I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, and your name? Good evening, my name is Natasha Athab. Can you spell that for me, please? My last name? Both. Natasha, N-A-T-A-S-H-A, -A -A, Athab, A-T-H-A-B, as in boy. A-T-H-A? B. B, sorry. No problem. Okay, Natasha, your time is gonna start on my countdown. You're going in three, two, one, go. Good evening. I am an employee of Partners in Prevention, a nonprofit located in, in and serving Hudson County for over 30 years. Our mission is to improve wellness and prevent substance use disorders and related health challenges in Hudson County and New Jersey. With changing laws regarding cannabis and related cannabinoid product legislation, it is more important than ever for us to ensure that young people are safe, 
healthy and substance-free during their developing years. Research indicates that brain development in minors is negatively impacted by cannabis, cannabis and cannabinoid use, including impacts on attention, memory, and learning. Additionally, cannabis use by minors is associated with increased development of substance use disorders. Partners in Prevention applauds the city of Jersey City for taking steps to regulate cannabinoid-related products and ensure that these products, such as Delta-8, THC are not sold to anyone under the age of 21. We also applaud your efforts to ensure that all vendors who sell tobacco and or cannabinoid products are registered to do so in the city of Jersey City. Local businesses and their owners and their employees who sell these products are interested with helping keep minors safe. They must play an important role in this process by participating in licensing, understanding the law, training new staff, and checking identification of those who wish to purchase these products. As a public health organization that has served Hudson County for nearly 35 years, as an affiliate of the National Council of Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, our mission is to promote wellness and reduce substance use disorders and their related impact on the community. We strongly support the passage of this ordinance and to continue to offer our guidance and support in developing thoughtful policies to reduce the negative impact of substance misuse in the city of Jersey City. This statement was respectfully submitted by Doug Braddon, the Executive Director of Partners in Prevention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is still a public hearing on City Ordinance 22-041. Any member of the public wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Just give me one second. Okay, Phil, your time is gonna start on my countdown. You're going in three, two, one, go. Oh, good evening, my name is Phil Carrington. I don't have a whole lot of information on this, but I do know that in years prior, a whole lot of young black people went to jail for cannabis. And what I'm saying is, now that you're making adjustments and registration and so on and so forth, you must or should consider Relaxing or canceling all of those young black people who are in jail for cannabis right now. Give them a break. Give them the chance to get out of jail and give them not only registration, but the money to start a legal smoke shop legally. And uh, it's about time and in fairness, this must be or should be considered. As you know, and all of us know, that occurred. But this has not been considered or talked about. Everybody's making money these days off of cannabis. And a whole lot of young black brothers are still in jail, had not make any money, and still ain't gonna make any money. That is my opinion. Good night. Thank you very much. This is still a public hearing on this ordinance. And your name? My name is Elena Klitsch. I didn't hear your first name. It's, so, it's so hard to hear. Go ahead. Elena, I just want to say... Um, okay. I'm sorry, your last name? I, I missed your last name. Klitsch. Klitsch. Okay, Elena, your time is going to start on my countdown. You're going in three, two, one, go. I just want to say I'm in support of this new ordinance, and I think it's great that businesses are going to be held, um, you know, accountable for selling to minors because a lot of what we're seeing today are minors vaping and getting, you know, drugs from businesses all across Jersey City, and these are teenagers and middle schoolers that they are selling to, and by making these businesses register that they are selling these products, it will allow inspections and hold them accountable. So I think this ordinance must be passed. And I think there's nothing wrong with selling to people of age. And of course, it's great. It's bringing in wonderful tax money to schools and police, and, you know, police across the city. However, I think that we need to protect you know, our young people of the city and that these, like, these businesses can't be doing what they're doing now. Thank you. Hey, this is still a public hearing on City Ordinance 22-041. Any member of the public here still wishing to be heard? 
And your name, sir? Hippolito Ovales. Can you spell that for me, please? H-I-P-O-L-I-T-O. -O. Ovales, spell O-V-A-L-L-E-S. Okay, sir, your time is going in three, two, one, go. Thank you for allowing me to speak a little bit about this very important ordinance. I represent all the bodega, all the small businesses in Jersey City, in the Hudson County. Um, we are supporting 100% this ordinance to make sure that all these young children not allowed to be sold this tobacco to make sure they are 21 or over. And I really, we really working very hard to make sure uh, this doesn't happen, that these uh, minors being, you know, it's very important for our community. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is still a public hearing on City Ordinance 22-041. Any member of the public still wishing to be heard, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Motion. Motion to close the public hearing made by Councilperson Rivera. May I have a second? Second. Second made by Councilperson Soleil. On the motion to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-041, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Bargiano absent to close the public hearing on City Ordinance 22-041. For final consideration and adoption of City Ordinance 22-041, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. City Ordinance is adopted City Ordinance 22-041 is adopted 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent. Council members, I believe we have a motion to defer to item 10.4, resolution 22-296, which is a resolution authorizing the city of Jersey City to accept a gift of trees with an estimate value of $10,000 from Julie Peters. I believe the motion is being made by Councilperson Soleil. Yes, if we could motion. May, may I have a second? Second. Second by Council President Waterman. I believe uh, Rich Peters and Julie Peters and uh, the family are here. Before we invite them up, let's just make the motion, vote on the motion to defer to item 10.4, resolution 22-296. On the motion to defer, Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Motion carries 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent to defer to item 10.4 City Resolution 22-296. Again, which is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City to accept a gift of trees with an estimated value of $10,000 from Julie Peters. Um, if they would like to come up while we take the vote. Or you have Council President, would you like them to uh, state, say, state, make a statement for the record before you vote, or yes, what do you want to take the vote first? Let them make a statement. This sure. Okay, whenever you're ready. I, I'll read this for my daughter. <laughs> Public speaking is not her strength. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting our city. Uh, this is Julie Peters. She's a Girl Scout in Troop 10094 of Jersey City. Uh, as she finishes her 11 years in scouting, uh, she wants to express her gratitude to Mr. Patrick Ambrosi, and the Leonard, Leonard Gordon Park Conservancy, and Mr. Vernon Richardson of the city of Jersey City for helping her complete her Girl Scout Gold Award project which will benefit one of our city parks, Leonard Gordon Park. Scouting is about service, especially service to a local community. 
As a lifelong resident of the Jersey City Heights, Julie wanted her project to give back to the residents of her community. Mm. For the past two years, everyone has struggled with the COVID-19 pandemic, a devastation that has claimed hundreds of Jersey City residents. The installation of a memorial grove of trees, an urban sanctuary dedicated to those loved ones we have lost during those turbulent years, will allow the residents of Jersey City Heights to begin a period of healing and rebirth. As these trees grow, the strong memories of those lost, including Councilman Michael Yun and her uncle David Peters, will inhabit these living symbols of renewal and healing. Parks unite communities. Let these trees shelter, inspire, and continue to unite our wonderfully diverse community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, council members. On resolution 22-296, Councilperson Ridley. Uh, I just want to say, Julie, thank you so much for uh, thinking of your community, thinking of your city, uh, and taking the time to be of service because service is very important. And um, I think this is a wonderful thing that you've decided to do. With that, I vote aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Um, thank you for your thoughtfulness and generosity and your leadership in this as a Girl Scout. Uh -huh. I look forward to hopefully hearing more from you as that goes on. And with that, I vote aye. Councilperson Soleil. I just want to thank you for everything that you've done and the idea and the follow through and being able to gift this to the city. It truly is a gift that will keep on giving. You know, these trees will provide oxygen and they'll provide uh, shelter for animals and shade for people and a place for us to reflect in this uh, urban, uh, urban streetscape. So it's going to be a beautiful addition to Leonard Gordon Park. And thank you for your leadership and everything that you've done. Councilperson Solomon. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you voted. I vote aye. <laughs> Thank you. Councilperson Solomon. Uh, to, to echo uh, Councilman Saleh's, you know, uh, thanks. The, the trees are really, you know, uh, something that we'll be giving to the city for 50, 100 years from now. In addition to all their wonderful benefits you mentioned, you know, I'll add uh, storing carbon, you know, a small piece, but one that helps us deal with climate change as well. And uh, we're just grateful for your leadership, and thank you so much. So with that, I proudly vote aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Um, actually, when I first looked at this, I thought this was um, a developer doing a good deed. But now that I see is a young lady that's actually taking initiative to help out the community. This is, this is tremendous. This is great foresight, great thinking. Great thinking not just for you, but for the community. Um, trees are so important. I actually think you should give the developers a tutorial on the importances of trees. Um, so thank you for your commitment, your community service, and you're headed places in the future, young lady, with that mindset. I vote aye. Councilperson DeGees. I thank you very much for doing this. I can see you're a bit reserved, but I hope that you brag about this a little bit. This is very huge, all right? Some people may think it's just a few new green things, but these things will be around long after we are, all right? So you just put a little piece of Jersey City history in Jersey City, thank you. And I hope that we can use this example to you know, shape other youth and other adults, being whatever their career is, uh, mm -hmm. Councilman Gilmore, uh, <laughs> on doing good deeds and making their community look better and be better. So thank you, I vote aye. Councilperson Rivera. Great job, I vote aye. And Council President Waterman. Superb, superb. Thank you, I do vote aye, thank you. City Resolution 22-296 is approved 8-0 with Councilperson Bajano absent. Thank oh. you very much. What Since we couldn't bring in a ceremonial tree, we brought in a ceremonial check. 
Oh, that's uh, uh, that's. I was wondering if so, if uh, a member of the council would be willing to accept it from Julie. Of course. That's nice. That's great. Mm -hmm. It is. And also, I very briefly also thank you for this. We're coming up on the 150th anniversary of Arbor Day tomorrow, so this could not be more perfectly timed because Jersey City is now Tree City, USA City. We're on the record. Girl Scouts, they're gonna lose. Their We're on the record. <laughs> frame it. Okay, thank you so much. You can frame it, right? Alrighty, now to our public speaking portion of the meeting. Our first speaker, Santa Della Monica, I believe he left. Next speaker we have is Gene Daly. Gene, I know you're here. Just give me a second. Your countdown starts in three, two, one, go. Um, good evening. I'm, I'm glad I had a chance to speak to Mr. Della Monica because I did point out to him resolution, uh, excuse me, item number 10.36. This is a re resolution authorizing the renewal of open-ended contract with Jeans Landscaping for grass cut cutting and maintenance for various parts of the Department of, for the Par Department of Public Works Division of Parks. This is a nearly $800,000 contract that you are giving to an outside New York-based entity, and yet you're not, you're, you, you won't hire and you won't invest more into our own residents in Jersey City and Hudson County? You should be ashamed of yourselves. I argued against this last year. I argued against this the year before. When I did bring it up last year, there were, had something to do about fertilizer. You need a permit to spread fertilizer in New Jersey. Jeans Landscaping did not have a fertilizer permit a year ago, and they don't have a fertilizer permit now. I don't know what you guys are doing, but the fact that you're giving, shelling out money, hands over fists, to these people who are based in New York versus our Jersey City union members or just members or just people who live here and work and work hard for the city is an outrage to me. And I'm glad I had a point. Mr. Della Monica was there so I could tell him of this. He's outraged. Additionally, I want to speak briefly about the planning board meeting that happened last night. Um, one thing we should, should be noted is that this Exchange Place Alliance hired Melillo, whoever this landscaping people are, illegally. When you are contracting anything for public any work on a public property, whether it's public building, public space, or pub public roadway slash pedestrian plaza, it has to go through New Jersey local public contracting law. They did not do that. Mr. DeMarco personally assigned his own palsy uh, landscape people when he, from when he was working with um, uh, Matt Cowley. This all needed to go out to public bidding. It did not. And that's why the design reflected only one vision, and that is of Mr. DeMarco's. What this council is permitting, the garbage that flies by, the money going out hand over fist to what I believe inappropriate entities has got to be stopped. I know you spent, that we're not supposed to be criticizing the council, but there is so much more that if I wanted to bring up to the council, I could because there are so many backroom deals that I've been made privy of, it's scary. This has got to end. Thank you, Jean. Okay. Go ahead, Sean. Next, I apologize about that. Next, speaker 5.3, David Jefferson. David Jefferson, are you here? I don't see him. Next speaker is Joseph Caluso. Sulo. Sulo. I apologize, Joseph. No problem. Go. Good evening, uh, Council President, Council Members. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to come before you. 
Um, my name is Joseph Chisolo. I'm the owner of Turnout Uniforms located at 3468 Kennedy Boulevard here in Jersey City. Uh, not only am I a 45-year business owner, but I'm a taxpayer as well as I'm proud to be an employer of many Jersey City residents. I come before you tonight to speak regarding Resolution 2234, which is classified as CBRN protective ensembles for the Department of Public Safety. Uh, being a uniform vendor, I deal with many products, and I'm grateful for the council because I am the provider of the uniforms and protective clothing for the fire department as well as many other agencies here in the city. CBRN equipment is something that I sell to the Port Authority, Jersey City Police, Jersey City Fire. It's nothing more than a self-contained hazmat suit that's used for chemical and biological uh, attacks. The reason I'm here tonight is I'm very disturbed about the process. In my other life, I've been afforded an opportunity to serve my hometown as a council member and a mayor for 19 years. So I'm very understanding of the purchasing process as well as the duty that each of you do, and I'm grateful for that. But tonight, we're putting the cart before the horse. You're going to sit here and approve a resolution for $525,000 of uniforms which do not meet the classification of CBRN for our police officers. As a vendor, I am one of the largest providers of uniforms from a company called Blower. That is the products that are shown on your purchase order number 143054, dated November 23rd, 2021, for 800 sets of uniforms for $525,000. Throughout this process, I had been made aware by my sales rep from Blower that he had been in Jersey City July, August, September, and October measuring your police offices in conjunction with the gentleman that this contract's been awarded to. I reached out to the business administrator's office and spoke to him on numerous occasions at various events in Jersey City. And as a local vendor, and I know from all your politicizing during your campaigns, as well as the mayor. Everything was about keep Jersey City, small business Jersey City. And here I am on Kennedy Boulevard employing residents, and I was not afforded an opportunity to even quote on this. And by the way, if one of you... Thank you, Jess. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker, Deborah Italiano. Deborah's not here. Sean, I think um, it passed. We don't. We don't go back. We don't go back. We don't go back. Deborah's not here. Tyler Newcomb. Okay, Tyler, your time is going to start on my countdown. You're going in three, two, one, go. Hi, Council. Uh, my name is Tyler Newcomb. I'm an EMT and a resident of Jersey City. I live in McGinley Square. I'm speaking today to talk about safe streets and to urge you to consider the safety of our first responders in Jersey City and our communities in the future planning of the city. I've been an EMT for three years, two of which were in the greater Boston area and for the past year in Jersey City. Uh, like any EMS provider, I've had my fair share of threats and hazards on the job. I've stared down the barrel of a gun, I've been threatened with a knife, sexually harassed, called slurs, and berated. I've worked on hazmat scenes and through a global pandemic. But far and away, the biggest and most consistent hazard that I've encountered on the job is motor vehicles and motorists. Whether it's close passes while going into a patient's house, operating at crash scenes on highways, uh, encountering reckless driving at work or having rocks thrown at my ambulance for having the audacity to block a street while tending to a critical patient. I have a very unique perspective. Uh, I drive a large vehicle in Jersey City, an ambulance, three days a week. The rest of my time in my personal life, I get around by walking, biking, and public transportation. I can comfortably say that there are areas in this city that are uncomfortable 
and dangerous to navigate by all means of transportation. It's a common fallacy that safe streets and uh, that safe street design will impede emergency vehicles, and I simply do not believe that to be true. Allowing people to safely travel through our cities and leave the car behind for some journeys is going to clear our streets up for emergency vehicles and for people who do still need to drive. Not to mention the health and safety benefits of slower speeds, fewer crashes, less pollution, and of course, active transportation. Safe streets can, should, and must coexist with our first responders and our emergency vehicles. I thank you all for your time. Thank you. Okay. Next, 5.7, Hanny L. Aldi. Hanny? Okay. Just give me one second to restart. Okay, ready? Hi, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to speak, everyone. Um, I won't take up too much of everyone's time. I, uh, I'm, my name is Hanny. I'm here actually uh, with my father. Um, basically, my father has been a food truck owner here in Jersey City. He's been a food truck owner for many, many decades, um, first in New York City, and then uh, we've been residents of Jersey City. So um, when he would work in New York City, it was difficult for him to spend time with us as a family. So he brought this, his business over to Jersey City. Um, and he's been here for, I think, 12 years, 13 years now. Um, and he served, you know, he was, I think, one of the, like, the first food trucks here, uh, just on the corner of Marin and Columbus. Um, he was able to, you know, build up the business from the roots uh, and, um, you know, survive the global pandemic uh, and all this hullabaloo. Um, but essentially now with, like, the new food truck ordinances, he's been, he, he hasn't been given a spot. Um, and I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, I know that um, in the effort of like maybe trying to start like variety or trying to um, give other businesses a chance, um, you know, I, I'm all for that and all for like competition. But I think that you know my father, who's been working here uh, and supporting myself, supporting the rest of our family for for years here in Jersey City, uh, as people who have grown up in Jersey City, we didn't like move here. Uh, you know, I went to elementary school here, went to public school. Um, went to McNair, I'm going to Rutgers now. Uh, and so people who live in Jersey City want to live in Jersey City. We just want to continue to live in Jersey City. Um, I just want to be able to, you know, have food on our table and make a little bit of money. Uh, and it's really not even really about the money, to be honest. The real reason I'm here is because my father is like, I think 67, about to be 68. Um, and it's just sort of, it's like this visceral, feeling that he has of like my business that I've built with from the ground up for decades is being taken away from me. Uh, not because I wasn't able to compete, not because I wasn't able to sell my product, not because people didn't like my product, it's because of an administrative or legal issue uh, with the city. Either something was going on with the, you know, like the tickets or something was going on with like you were, start, you know, like the, the place that you were in um, had to be given to someone else, something like that. Uh, and. It's, it hasn't really been made clear to us, it hasn't been made clear to him. Uh, and the reason I'm here is because uh, I'm gonna be fine in my life, I'm gonna be working, I'm gonna be doing whatever, my brother, everyone's gonna be fine. But my dad, you know, it's, it's difficult to be for, it's like forced into retirement almost at this age. Um, and I don't want him to be forced into retirement, and he doesn't want to be forced into retirement. Uh, he wants to continue supporting, his, like having a business, paying taxes, doing what he needs to do. Um, and I think that, you know, just revisiting this idea of like food truck ordinances, and giving spots to, to people, and the way we were given, they were given to people, um, I think should be addressed. Uh, I won't take any more time. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, 5.8, Philip Carrington. Okay, Phil, ready? Council President rather my members of the City Council to the, the Monterey and Record Gallagher. My name is Philip Carrington. My topic today is the unfair distribution and compelling of the vaccine to people. Well, let me digress for a moment because uh, Council President Radman made a statement that she is fair and she would hear everybody. Over the years, um, Council President Radman and Danny Rivera were one of the very few people who would return my calls and meet with me in private and in public and not afraid to do so. You can add Gal um, Gilmore to that, he take it to another level. So that statement is just the truth. Uh, the black folks will be, Phil Cameron, hey, 
<laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Last, in the last fortnight I was here, I made a statement that the vaccine killed 28 people per day. I'm giving the facts on that. In July, late July 2021, the government came out with a record, that's a, a, a report, sorry, that's saying that the, uh, from December the 14th, 2020, to July the 19th, 2021, the vaccine killed 6,702 people. You break that down, you should get about 28 people per day. The record also states that the vaccine kill approximately, approximately or over 20,000 people. Well, the CDC whistleblower said it's about 52,000 people. The Harvard University, the Columbia University study says approximately 108,000 people. The Harvard study says approximately 120,000 people. We just suppose that to the, or compare that to the number of people who was murdered or killed by, uh, in Vietnam, Americans, it's 58,000 people. So if you use the government number, 20,000, half the people, the vaccine kill. If you use Columbia or Harvard, it is twice the number. I have a serious problem somebody telling me, trying to convince me that the vaccine is safe. Give me some better numbers, but those numbers say it is untrue. The number one uh, killer or death as relate to the vaccine is disseminating intracovacular coagulation, which is thrombosis. In the black community, it's called blood clots. So with these kind of numbers and these kind of statements, someone has to stop fooling black folks that the vaccine is safe. You're lying to the people. The question quickly then is what is COVID? COVID is the acronym for the word Certificate of Vaccination Identification, and it works by something called artificial intelligence. So, certificate of vaccination, then the junk that you have, you don't need it. All your government data, government documents will be there, your, your passport, your certificate, your driver's license will all be inside of you. And then what is artificial intelligence? Num 19, Thank can you, I request Philip. 15 seconds to conclude? 20 seconds to conclude? Five. <laughs> Uh, thank, thank you quickly. Quickly, okay. So the acronym, um, the, the acronym for artificial intelligence is AI. In the English alphabet, number one is A, number nine is I. So 19 is AI, which is artificial intelligence. You got it. I feel the Two. That is my viewpoint. <laughs> Good night. Okay, council members, not on your printed agenda. I have one more speaker that signed up right before the start of the meeting, James Lee. I don't know if he's here. James Lee is not here. Okay. All righty, now on to our petitions and communications. Item 6.1 through 6.33. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Office of Communications 7.1 through 7.5. Uh, any questions or comments? Any questions or comments on the report of directors 8.1 through 8.4? Hearing none, we're going on to our claims and addendums. Number one, number two, and number three was, it's not on your printed agenda, but it was added to the agenda right before the start of the meeting as well. Um, so we have meeting claims, Claim and addendums number one, two, and three. So, council members, I'm going to be taking a vote on claims and addendums one, two, and three. Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Salai. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. Councilperson DeGees. Aye. Councilperson Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Claims and addendums number one, two, and three are approved 8-0 with Councilperson Baggiano absent. On to our resolutions. Council members are gonna be taking a vote on items 10.1 through 10.13 with the exception of 10.13 which has been withdrawn and 10.4 and 10.7 were approved earlier. So again, that's on items 10.1 through 10.12 with the exception of four and seven which were approved earlier. Councilperson Ridley. Aye. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Aye. Councilperson Gilmore. Aye. 
Councilperson DeGeese? Aye. Councilperson Rivera? Aye. And Council President Waterman? Aye. Items 10.1 through 10.12 are approved 8-0, with Councilperson Bajano absent. Item 10.13 has been withdrawn. Items 10.14 through 10.23. Again, items 10.14 through 10.23. Councilperson Ridley. On 10.19, uh, BA, can you, I guess, uh, speak to that a little bit? Because I know that we, we had someone speak tonight and mention the CBRN. Again, I think I have those acronyms right, but we did receive a memo that there was some confusion I guess with the, uh, the, the, the resolution and some changes made since we had our caucus. Yes, Councilwoman. So I believe uh, Director Shea had reached out to the uh, council, or Director uh, Moody, uh, rather. Um, the change that was made between caucus and the council meeting was that the uh, resolution included language that was copied from the um, website, not necessarily um, Included to the description of the item that we were purchasing, so we updated that and amended. Jeanette. Was the reason why it didn't go to bid because it's from a state contractor, or what's the? Uh, so they're using a state co-op uh, co for purchase. Okay. And also, BA, these are uh, we're using grant funds for these uniforms. I believe these are federal uh, seizure funds that we were using for this. Uh, okay. These are dollars that return to the city through state, uh, various state entities uh, for uh, <laughs> illicit activity. <laughs> okay. To 23, right, Sean? Yes. So we're going from 10.14 to 10.23. Okay. I vote aye. Thank you. Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Uh, I'm going to vote aye for all. Um, you know, I hear uh, some of the criticism regarding it, and um, I just saw the uniforms the way they were uh, in, in the meeting, and I think that the police officers should have a Class B uniform, that they're able to maneuver and walk and able to interact with the public a lot easier than their Class A's. Um, that's notwithstanding, you know, all the criticism, but um, I do vote aye, and that's all. Councilperson Solomon. Um, I'm gonna vote no on 1019. Um, I think the case for the uniforms it was, was a, you know, well made by uh, the leadership of the police department and public safety. Um, I, I just think it's good practice when you have a, you know, half million dollar Expenditure, and this is from capital dollars that we get through through the work of the police department. It's not from our direct operating budget, but it's still an expenditure of city money. And I think going out to bid um, for an item that you know multiple vendors possess is not you know must be had the next minute. I think is a much better practice. You know, bids are not perfect, but you know I think I feel more confident knowing we've gotten the best uh, bang for the buck that we've gotten a good deal. Um, that when we do that. So um, given how much th th this is, I didn't feel comfortable um, voting yes, although I was appreciative of the sort of responsiveness and uh, that the uh, leadership of the PD had just in answering our questions about it. Um, and then for everything else, I vote aye. Thank you. Councilperson Gilmore. Yes, um, I guess I'm gonna vote um, aye on all, but I do have um, some concerns with regards to 1019. Um, in the future, is there any way we can make sure that uh, prep work is not done until we actually solidify the contract? Because, I mean, in the, in the vendor's defense, it's like, all right, we've been, you know, sizing these people for however long they've been doing it, and then we, we haven't even agreed on if they're going to get the contract. We don't know if we're open to be sued or anything like that. So in the future, if we can make sure this is a more transparent process where everyone's on board. Um, so I vote aye in, on all and just have that, um, if we can iron that out. That's all. Yeah, uh, Sean, I'm just going to respond. Yep. Uh, 
uh, Councilman, uh, that would be in our policies and procedures in our purchasing uh, procurement uh, log. So we could amend that and uh, show the council once we do that. Okay, thank you. Councilperson DeGees? Aye. Councilperson Rivera? So um, I'm, I'm, this, this was killing me, but listen, I'm, I'm gonna vote aye, but, but I wanna be very, very clear here. Uh, the, the public safety department screwed up here and by putting the cart before the horse, you know, this is not about uh, the, uh, the vendor, about turnout, you know, that it went into public bid. The fact that the bold-faced disrespect that was done by actually fitting our police officers before this came to council, I just hope that that practice doesn't happen or continue to happen. The reason why I'm voting for this is because working with a Class A uniform, the way the director wanted it a few years ago, that everybody must wear a Class A uniform, uh, now all of a sudden he's listening to the officers saying, oh, they, they, they should be you know, a little more comfortable, let's give them a Class B uniform. This was a conversation that we've been having for several years, now all of a sudden an epiphany kicked in and he's concerned about the safety or the or the or our police officers being comfortable. I mean, the reason why I'm voting for this is because it is extremely hard to work with a class A uniform and a five point hat for you to be out there chasing people, working in hundred degree weather with a bulletproof vest and alt and a rig belt. It's uncomfortable. It really is. The uniforms by the uniform was explained great by Director Shea, Director Moody, uh, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Dan, uh, Ben Daly. They explained it great, and it makes sense. You know, the, the, the uniform will make the officers feel comfortable, and they can do their job better. But the practice of what, how it got to that point was ridiculous. And for us to approve a $512,000 budget be, by doing that type of act, it's, it's tough, but again, I'm doing it because the officers feel comfortable with the uniform they're getting. We need to really understand that, and we hope that that doesn't happen again. I vote aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Okay, if I can just recap. <clears throat> Items 10.14 through 10.17 are approved 8-0 with Councilperson Bargiano absent. Item 10.19 is approved 7-1 with Councilperson Solomon voting no and Councilperson Bargiano absent. Items 10.20 through 10.23 are approved 8-0 with Councilperson Bargiano absent. On to our next set of uh, resolutions, items 10.24 through 10.35. Again, items 10.24 through 10.35. Councilperson Ridley. On 10.35, um, I apologize. I might have stepped out when we discussed this at caucus, so it might be double information. But what are we using the, the bus for? Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, so uh, we discussed this uh, Monday uh, with Director Kears. This is a replacement for a recreation uh, vehicle. Um, the one that we have is exceeding 15 years of use, so uh, this will just be part of the retention schedule. And what we're looking to do is continue building that with the software that we're potentially approving tonight, knowing the next time to replace it again. So we're trying to get on a fixed schedule that this will be automatic and that we have the best vehicles and safe vehicles on the road. Thank you. With that, I vote aye for all. Thank you, Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. I'm going to vote aye for all, but I want to reiterate that we need to have GPS on all the vehicles in this city, and they shouldn't leave the city unless it's for official use. And I vote aye for all. Thank you. Thank you. Councilperson Solomon. Um, I'm going to abstain on 1029 and vote aye on the rest. Standing on 1029 and I on the rest, correct? Thank you. Councilperson Gilmore. Yes, I'm going to um, also abstain on 29, and 
I just want the record to reflect that when, when we know that individuals are coming up for appointments and reappointments, can you please notify the council that we have sufficient time to talk with these individuals because it's one thing to look at a resume and then it's another thing to actually have an interview and sit down and talk with the individual. Um, I reached out to try to talk with them. Apparently there was some disconnect with regard to the public safety and the prosecutor's office and the meeting never happened. I was in my office all morning waiting and it never happened. So if we, if we know that individuals are coming for appointments or reappointments, um, can we just please make sure that the council knows so we'll have the opportunity to uh, speak with those individuals. So I'll vote aye on all of them. I'm gonna uh, abstain on 29. Okay. Council Person DeGees. Aye on all. Council Person Rivera. Aye. And Council President Waterman. Aye. Okay, if I can just recap items 10.24 through 10.28 are approved 8-0. With Councilperson Bargiano absent, item 10.29 is approved 602. With Council Members Solomon and Gilmore abstaining and Councilperson Bargiano absent, items 10.30 through 10.35 are approved 8-0 with Councilperson Bargiano absent. For the balance of our resolutions, items 10.36 through 10.41. Again, items 10.36 through 10.41. Councilperson Ridley. On 41, the late item that we just added with the crisis response, um, can we, I see that it, it's really just to um, allow us the opportunity to, I guess, uh, find someone to do, a vendor to do that work. Can we just make sure that we keep the council on the loop on that whole process and the setup so that we are aware um, before we roll any programs out? Yeah, absolutely, Councilwoman. Well, uh, we could circulate the RFP once it make, becomes public, and then we'll come back to the council before we award competitively. I vote aye for all. Thank you, Councilperson Prinzeri. Aye. Councilperson Soleil. Aye. Councilperson Solomon. Yeah, on 1041, and it's a late item, you know, I'm going to reach out to the director directly, but I, I think it'd be great to have, uh, this is an item that, you know, I think it's really important. I think it's really glad to see it, but I'd also like a chance to sit down in some ways before the RFP goes out and make sure that we're shaping it on national best practices, which, you know, just to say, I mean, there's a number of really strong studies that show that the, these types of responses, when done well, reduce violence, make it better and easier for our police department to do the important work that they need to do while ensuring that, you know, non-armed professionals are the ones responding to any number of different 911 calls that they're better equipped to respond to oftentimes than uniformed officers. So uh, given its importance, I'd love to make sure that we're, we're starting the conversation now. Yeah. And uh, I'll have the director circulate the draft and uh, we can, I'll help you assist in coordinating those uh, meetings. Great, thank, thank you. And then just briefly on, on 1036, I think you know, Ms. Daly makes a pretty good point about this one. You know, this is a renewal of a contract, so I'm gonna vote yes to move it forward, but in a year, it's the type of thing we're renewing now. We're not in the length of contract. It's a very big contract, 800K. It is to a non-Jersey City business. We'd love to open this up in the next purchasing round and just see if we can get a better bid. Maybe we don't, and this then they're doing a great job. We want to keep them, but maybe we got a local vendor who's uh, going to give us a better deal. Councilman, uh, what we could do is explore splitting it up amongst uh, separate bids for separate parks. You know, rather than a bulk, but I'll work with the council during the budget. Yeah, process. I think that'd be great. We got a year renewal, we got a year to look at it. So thanks, so with that I vote aye for all. Councilperson Gilmore. Yes, um, I vote aye on all uh, with respect to 10.40, uh, rest in peace to Jerry. I'm so grateful that the family is finally getting some form of closure. Um, this is one of the kids that was in our recreation program whom I worked with since he was, well, he died as a kid, but since he was about two or three years old. So um, just want to send my gratitude to the family and um, I'm thankful that they're getting closer. So I vote aye on all. Thank you. Councilperson DeGees. Aye on all. Councilperson Rivera. 
I vote aye, and specifically on 1036, this company really does a lot of the ballparks throughout the field, throughout the field and they really, um, they do, they do just, not just the ballpark, they do the clay, they do, you know, so these guys are very, very important. Uh, we've, in the past, we've had bids throughout and companies come and they really don't do good with our ballparks, so these guys have been doing good so far. So with that, I vote aye. Thank you, and Council President Waterman. I for all. Okay. Items 10.36 through 10.41 are approved. 8-0 with Councilperson Bajano absent. Would nothing else to be added or Motion said? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn at 7.46 p.m. Second. Made by Councilperson Rivera. And I heard a quick second by Councilperson Soleil on the motion to adjourn at 6.46. 47 p.m. Excuse me, at 7:46 p.m. Councilperson Ridley, Councilperson Prinzeri, aye. Councilperson Soleil, aye. Councilperson Solomon, aye. Councilperson Gilmore, aye. Councilperson DeGeese, aye. Councilperson Rivera, aye. And Council President Waterman, aye. Motion carries 8-0 to adjourn at 7:46 p.m. With Councilperson Bargiano absent. Thank you so much, everyone. As I always say, teamwork makes the dream work. Have a great night. Stay safe. Hey, Frank, we don't need all the cameras. We don't need all the cameras. I'm about to.